So guys, if you take a glass of water, take a nine volt battery, connect the two ends of nine, nine volt battery with a wire into water, you see there is no current passing. That means D ionized water, pure water, distilled water does not conduct electricity. And if you place some salt in water, you see it will conduct electricity. That simply means that you need electrolytes for a solution to conduct electricity. You need electrolytes for water to become conductive of electricity. What are electrolytes? Table salt is electrolyte. Why is it called electrolyte? Because it causes conduction of electricity in water. Now, I can show you this video, but I'll show you another picture on other slides which will get past the concept of this picture to you. Look at here, guys. If I take one, I connect one terminal of electricity to this light bulb and the other terminal, this is the other terminal going through water and water is coming to here. If this water is conductive of electricity, electricity is passing from here to here and you're going to see the light coming up. On the left, the current is coming here, going through water and going through the other wire. So water is acting like a switch. This water contains salt in it. This is sodium chloride and water. So salt causes conductivity of electricity in pure water. So we say this solution inside here is an electrolyte. What is electrolyte solution which conducts electricity? Now, on this other one, I don't have what salt dissolved in water, I have sugar dissolved in water. As you see, sugar is molecular, doesn't have a charge, it cannot cause conduction of electricity. So this solution it's called non-electrolyte. It doesn't conduct electricity. So electrolytes are substances which dissolve in water. They are ionic. They cause conduction of electricity simply because, look, if I add sodium chloride, sodium has positive charge. Chloride has negative charge. This is the sodium. It's coming to negative terminal to pick up an electron. And then Cl minus, which is negative, is going to come to positive terminal and give electron. So electron which is given will go through the circuit and will be absorbed by Na plus. Movement of electron is called electrical current. So electrons are moved because of the ions. Because there is ions, sodium chloride is electrolyte. There is no charge in molecules of sugar. Why? Because sugar is molecular compound. It's not ionic. It's made by covalent bond. There is no movement of molecules of sugar toward positive and terminal. There is no electron movement. There is no electrical current on the right. So you see the light is not on. Light is on. I hope this makes sense. Otherwise, please come and see me. So can I say electrolyte is a substance that when dissolved in water results in solution that can conduct electricity. Sodium chloride is an electrolyte dissolves in water and then water which contains ions can conduct electricity. And it, that's exactly why we need salt to live because our uh, nervous system our nerves are connecting or taking the orders by electrical signal to our uh, muscles to start movement. So we need salt for conductivity in our body. 
So what is a non-electrolyte? As I said, sugar is non-electrolyte. It may dissolve in water. It doesn't make ion. It doesn't cause conduction of electricity. So next slide. On the left-hand side, again, I have pure water here, pure water. It doesn't have ions. It does not conduct electricity. It cannot act like a switch. Between these two, there is no movement. These are separated. There is no ion to move charge from one end into another to close the circuit. It's like the circuit which is on off switch. And here now, I'm adding something which is called weak electrolyte. Weak ele electrolytes break down to ions in very minimum amount. In other words, you may add a weak electrolyte to water. It may break down 1%. That means 99 molecules out of 100 remains without a charge. And only 1% is breaking down to ions. So it caused a small amount of conductivity. And then on the right hand side, I add sodium chloride. It's a strong electrolyte. Why? Because sodium chloride is 100% dissociated in water to produce ions. So 100% ions, a strong electrolyte. Partial ionization gives you weak electrolyte. No ionization it gives you non-electrolyte. I hope these concepts make sense to you. So what conducts electricity in water? As I mentioned, ions. What are ions? They're either positive charge or negative charge. We call positively charged ions like sodium ion, cation. We call negatively charged ions anions. So these two, if they are in water and they're always together, you can't have anions without cations. You can't have cations without anions. So any substance which contains cation will have anions as well. So these two, when they are present in water, they can cause conduction of electricity. So what is the strong electrolyte? Any substance dissolved in water and producing 100% ions, 100% dissociated to ions, that would be strong electrolyte. NaCl is the Common example, it breaks down 100% in water to produce an A plus and Cl minus. Now, what is a weak electrolyte? It's not completely dissociated. For example, if you take acetic acid, that's the acid in vinegar. Do you see this equilibrium? What is the meaning of equilibrium? Do you remember? It doesn't go 100% to the right, it goes some degree to the right, and then it comes back, you always have undissociated molecules and some dissociation. Degree of dissociation can vary depending on the equilibrium constant. The smaller the equilibrium constant, the smaller reaction goes to the right, you have a smaller concentration of ions, or vice versa. The larger equilibrium constant, the larger concentration of ions because reaction is going more toward right. So the amount of ionization of a weak electrolyte depends on the nature of the electrolyte. However, it's never 100%. But in a strong electrolyte, the amount of dissociation, the amount of ionization is 100%. So this is looking at dissociation of sodium chloride. You add sodium chloride to water, 
And what you are going to see that this is the positive charged sodium, which is surrounded by negatively charged chloride. Water molecule is going to go between them, separate them, and as a result, water cause dissolution of sodium chloride in water. So what happens to the separated Cl minus and separated Na plus once they are dissolved in water? Do you see they are surrounded by water molecule? This is called solvation. Because water is also called hydration, if solvent is water, we call it hydration, but if there are other solvents, we call it solvation. So do you see, <clears throat> once these two ions are surrounded by water molecule, they don't see each other, they cannot bond together, they cannot go back to undissociated forms. So we see 100% dissociation of sodium chloride in water. <clears throat> it is these ions which are responsible for conduction of electricity in water. In fact, when, I, when we write in A plus, AQS, that's what we mean. It means Na plus is surrounded by water molecule. And if I write Cl minus AQS, this is what we mean. That means Cl minus is not alone. It's surrounded by water molecule. Which end of water molecule do you see? That this end of water molecule is positive end, hydrogen end of water molecule is positive, right? Remember, hydrogen, this hydrogen has positive charge. This hydrogen has positive charge. This is the center of positive charge of water molecule. The oxygen end has negative charge. And look at here, the positively charged, the positively charged ion is surrounded by negatively charged oxygen of water. You remember that opposite attract. So these cluster of water molecule are hydrating ions. They don't let them go back to where they come from. But when you see partial ionization, this is not the case. The ions are not salvaged enough to go back. They find each other, they go back to the neutral molecule. So examples of a strong electrolyte has been mentioned. Sodium chloride, KBR, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, perchloric acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, HI. Experimentally, these are proven to be 100% dissociated in water. They produce ions, so they are a strong electrolyte. Non-electrolyte, well, sugar, as we said. And this is ethyl alcohol. It does not dissociate in water. Methyl alcohol does not dissociate in wa water. Pure water cannot conduct electricity. An organic compound, they are molecular, they don't contain ions, they cannot cause conductivity. And some compounds like acetic acid, it's a weak acid, it dissociates partially, it doesn't produce 100% ions. Hydrofluoric acid does not produce 100% ions, it's a weak acid is going to be partially dissociated to ions. So it's a weak electrolyte. Ammonia, the same thing. These are not dissociated 100% to ions, so they are weak electrolyte. These are 100% dissociated to ions. They are a strong electrolyte. These do not percent any ions. So they do not conduct electricity. We call them non-electrolyte. <clears throat> 